Hi, my name is Sean Gidevin, and I'm with the Android Enterprise team here at Google. On behalf of everyone here, we hope that you, your friends, and family are safe and healthy. Uh, special thank you to you for attending today's presentation, but also to Hexnode for providing the opportunity and the forum for me to speak today. Uh, I lead digital partnerships and global strategy for the Android Enterprise team. And what that means is I spend a lot of my time working with partners and customers to ensure that the Android platform is delivering what it needs to to help organizations capitalize around the opportunities uh, for digital transformation. And what I wanted to do was uh, share with you some of the use cases and uh, market trends that we're seeing um, here at Google, specifically around opportunities in digital transformation and help understand sort of what those changes in the market mean uh, and the opportunities that they present to you as Hexman partners and how these can apply to your business. So with that, let's get started. I think there's no question that digital transformation is here to stay. Uh, a recent survey from PricewaterhouseCoopers of global CEOs found that 86% of US CEOs were going to increase their spend in digital transformation uh, as specifically as a result of COVID-19. And 43% of those surveyed said they were actually going to increase their spending by over 10%. In parallel, by 2022, IDC estimates that 65% of global CIOs will digitally empower and enable their frontline workers with tools like artificial intelligence, data, and security in order to extend um, decision-making capabilities, particularly in the face of uh, rapid changes, and also make those employees more productive uh, and more adaptable. So, so what does this mean from a meta perspective? Well, certainly it seems like there's a lot of folks uh, who are spending um, you know, more money to go and enable workers to be more productive with digital technologies. What's I think notable here though, is that uh, when we look at data from 2020 from IDC around the penetration of mobile technologies, those still seem underinvested, particularly amongst the frontline workers that are driving uh, really the core of many businesses and certainly uh, any customer facing um, workflows within your organization. 49% uh, of frontline workers were estimated to be enabled with mobile technologies, according to IDC. 55% um, of information workers uh, uh, were estimated to have been enabled with mobile technologies. Now, I think the good news, the optimism here is that IDC estimates by the end of the forecast period, nearly 60% of the U.S. workforce will be uh, mobile workers. But we still have quite a ways to go to reach that point, um, particularly in areas uh, like frontline work. And so, you know, what does this have to do with digital transformation? Well, when we think about digital transformation, we often think about technologies like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. Um, and those are very, very and predictive analytics. Um, all of these are important technologies, particularly for organizations that are, you know, in the middle or the beginning of their digital journeys. Um, but if we look at some an area like manufacturing, um, you know, I can go through and build very complex and sophisticated uh, digitally monitored manufacturing systems. Maybe I even build a digital twin um, so I actually can monitor how that machine is behaving and sort of change environmental variables against the digital twin to understand how my physical machine may interact. But at the end of the day, that digital twin isn't going to repair itself. The artificial intelligence library is not going to repair the uh, the manufacturing machine, no matter how many predictive maintenance workloads you th decide to throw at it. Um, and so ultimately, mobile is the presentation layer to the digital business. Perhaps more importantly, mobile is the way that this data that we're gathering and bringing into the cloud for complex analyses becomes actionable by people. And so keep this in mind as we explore some of the other use cases um, as we uh, talk in the presentation, because I think this is sort of a, a broad way to look at where some of the opportunities may lie in the customers that you work with day to day. Let's use another uh, vertical example. We talked about manufacturing. In retail, the Home Depot is combining artificial intelligence 
and mobility to uh, better understand and ensure that the right products are on the, cell, on the shelf. So when I go into a Home Depot and I'm looking for a hammer, that that hammer is actually going to be there. Um, the Home Depot is connected to their supply chain systems, their point of sale systems into Google Cloud. Um, and they're constantly using artificial intelligence to understand is an item about to go out of stock. But they've enabled mobile on top of that work, work, workflow to say, okay, if an item is about to go out of stock, let's dispatch a store associate to go and put more items on the shelf if those are available in the store. Um, they also, though, are using the mobile application to better reinforce the predictive AI learning uh, tools that have been deployed inside Google Cloud. So when the store associate shows up to go and add more hammers, it, the application asks how many hammers were on the shelf. And by constantly reinforcing um, real data about shelf availability uh, from the store associate into the cloud, that machine learning algorithm is able to make more and more accurate pre uh, predictions over time. Now you could imagine uh, the Home Depot investing in you know computer vision technology uh, to even you know further improve things like shelf availability. We've all been into retail stores where there's a particular item that's not where it's supposed to be. Maybe it even doesn't have a price tag or a UPC code on it. So how are we supposed to know where that item is supposed to be or how it should be priced? Well, we can go through and use tools like Visual Search traditionally a cloud technology, but deliver them out to the store associate. So that store associate can go through and say, ah, this red mug looks like another red mug that we normally keep in stock. Let's go and put that on the shelf and potentially add a new price tag such that some consumer, when they walk in, can go buy that uh, while they're at the Home Depot. Um, the Home Depot didn't ex ex uh, disclose exactly how much revenue this has generated, but they did say that a 1%, just a 1% increase in shelf availability, uh, so the availability of something to be purchased is highly correlated to the sales opportunities at the Home Depot, and they've, they've easily uh, realized this investment in digital technologies that they've made to make their store experience and their store associates more efficient. Um, likewise, in, in field services, we're seeing, uh, again, this intersection of artificial intelligence and mobility be used to improve customer service. Um, so, you know, the Rent-A-Kill, which is a global leader in pest control solutions, um, it has gone through and trained a custom machine learning algorithm such that when a field technician takes a picture of a particular pest, that can more accurately identify what that pest is and, potent you know, more importantly, um, recommend what is the treatment plan that needs to be taken against that particular pest. And so by combining things like the device camera and machine learning uh, capabilities, um, they can actually go through and really end up with a win-win for both customers and employees alike. Employees are more efficient, customers are more get a more accurate service, uh, less return visits required by field technicians. And so ultimately it's a better overall holistic service for the consumer and the field technician alike. We're certainly seeing a variety of different uh, extensions of mobility specifically deployed uh, into support COVID-19. Many of us are on uh, tools like Google Meet and Zoom all day. Uh, we're, we're well familiar with those deployments of technology, um, but, but large global retailers have gone through and used mobile to enable new workflows that you as a consumer may be familiar with. Things like buy online, pick up in store, or curbside delivery. Uh, mobile is a way to make sure that that's a very accurate and efficient service. Uh, mobile technologies have been used to help the store associate know what they need to be picking up, maybe even what that, not only where that item is, but what the item looks like to improve order accuracy. Uh, and then certainly from an efficiency perspective, when I drive up to the curb, those store associates have mobile devices to know, hey, it's Mr. Ginnivan, and this is where this order is. Uh, and so there's a much more efficient service delivered on that side as well. Even things like understanding how many people are in the store uh, and knowing uh, how many people to be let into, you know, can be let in out of the line. Um, you know, we've seen sort of these lines develop uh, depending on on sort of where different jurisdictions are uh, with regard to store occupancy levels. Um, you know, mobile is actually helping enable that workflow as well. So the store associates know how many more people can be let in.
in the logistics space, obviously large re uh, logistics companies have gone through and been uh, consumers of mobile technologies. We're seeing this also now in smaller logistics companies, um, digitizing workflows just simply to keep up with demand um, uh, from the increase in package delivery that we're seeing as a result of COVID-19. Uh, but we're also seeing integrating and uh, th seeing them integrate workflows like Google Maps, such those that those delivery drivers can go through, particularly in last mile, um, optimize their uh, delivery routes depending on changing conditions like street closures um, that were instituted early in the pandemic uh, to enable for outdoor activities with larger social distancing. And then certainly healthcare workers have been heroes of the pandemic, um, going above and beyond to care for folks both with uh, who are and are not suffering from COVID-19, um, but and, and a lot of them have been enabled with mobile technologies to provide better bedside care, access to patient records, um, you know, access to drug information uh, to provide the best course of care possible. But we're also seeing mobile technologies be rolled out uh, to the patients themselves. Uh, for any of you that have had the unfortunate circumstance to be sick over the last year or, or need surgery over the last year, it is very difficult for your loved ones to come visit you uh, or your friends to come visit you, whether you have COVID or not. And so mobile technologies have really been a lifeline for patients to interact with friends and family um, while they've been in the hospital. So. Uh, none of these are necessarily what we think of as traditional IT deployments of mobility, you know, mobile email, um, mobile Salesforce, sales lookup tools uh, that have traditionally been in the domain of IT. In fact, uh, IDC predicts that the growth in technology spend from business leaders is actually going to be double that of IT in 2021. And so the take home uh, message here for you as partners is to really be exploring and making those connections with the lines of business in customer Customers that you work with because there may be um, incredible opportunities for deployment of mobile technologies in for these line of business use cases beyond um, the traditional IT wallet share that has been applied to mobility um, in the past. Now, when we look at IT spend specifically, I think the, the other case for optimism here is that uh, the two highest growth areas over the next 12 months, according to a survey just from a couple weeks ago uh, from Gartner, uh, is uh, in devices with 14% growth and software with 10.8% growth. So again, we are seeing IT also allocate more budget um, for some of these workflows, you know, the combination of devices and software um, to enable uh, a variety of digital workflows across the organization. That devices spend is inclusive of both laptops as well as mobile devices as well. You know, from an Android perspective, like where does this, what does this mean for Android and why is Android the right platform to enable a lot of these digital workflows? You know, ultimately there are thousands of different device types with Android. Um, you can apply the right device that's fit for purpose for a particular work style uh, or, or work uh, worker in the organization. What's right for somebody working in the back office and finance may not be right for somebody who's on the front line in field services or in a logistics warehouse. And so you can really pick the right devices uh, for the right purpose. There are obviously applications for every use case, both point application uh, providers, but also large providers like SAP, Salesforce, IBM, that are all investing uh, heavily into Android, and we're working very closely with them to ensure that best-in-class experiences are delivered with the platforms that customers are already invested in. Um, Built-in security, obviously, is important. Security is top of mind for many organizations. And so we, we start at the hardware and bring security all the way up to the application layer um, with Android. And that's backed by Google Machine Learning, constantly on the hunt for things like malware and other threats that may put your corporate data at risk. And then finally, you know, partners uh, like Hexnode are delivering robust and enterprise, robust enterprise device and possibly more importantly, application management capabilities um, to ensure that these, ex these digital experiences can be easily delivered to the employee. In fact, you know, newer technologies like zero touch deployment capabilities really allow organizations to drop ship Android devices directly to someone's home or directly to a, a particular facility. And as soon as those devices are unboxed, they're tailored with the right policies and right experience for that particular worker, whether that's somebody that is a more of a BYRD, us, our corporate enabled scenario where 
an employee is mixing personal data and corporate data, the work profile allows that data to stay separate. So a user is uh, can use personal information without putting corporate data at risk, or work with personal applications without putting corporate data at risk. Uh, but we can also tailor the Android experience to be very specific for a line of business experience, like scanning a package or looking up customer records. Um, and in fact, Android's sort of open source nature and its ability to do deeper integrations with third parties makes the platform more dynamic, secure, and ultimately of greater value to enterprises. This is not just my own opinion. This is data from IDC, who also found that the average take time that it takes for an enterprise application to be developed was actually far less than other platforms in the market. And those organizations whose deployments of mobility exceeded their expectations was higher with Android than other platforms in the market. And so this openness and flexibility to build really great experiences that really meet the needs of those CIOs that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation, where we're empowering workers to make right time decisions uh, with more accuracy and more efficiency. Um, you know, really, Android is a great platform to build those experiences on top of. Now, one of the headwinds here is that many enterprise devices today aren't managed. And this actually represents an opportunity for you as Hexnode partners. Many app devices are still managed via either ActiveSync, uh, which is an email synchronization protocol that can deliver real basic policies like setting a device passcode or remote wiping a device, uh, or they're not managed at all. And the challenge here is that by not having the right EMM foundation in place, it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for organizations to realize the benefits that CEOs and CIOs alike are seeking from their digital transformation investments. So it is absolutely critical that organizations be deploying um, not just mobile devices to their employees to enable those frontline workers, but also the EMM tools uh, that provide that foundation for corporate data to be protected and mobile applications to be easily rolled out. So def I definitely encourage you to be kind of engaging with both the line of business and IT organizations to ensure that EMM is being appropriately applied to these deployments of Android within organizations. To wrap things up, you know, Android is is uh, really offers a lot of key benefits to help enable digital transformation within organizations. It's not just a cost effective platform to enable digital workflows, you know, that are built in with things like sheets and, and email uh, and collaboration tools, but also is an extensible platform to build new digital workflows, uh, whether that's machine learning with tools like MLKit, so you can easily scan things like barcodes or digitize uh, characters on a paper form uh, without necessarily being needing to be a machine learning expert. We deliver those models for you or things like augmented reality uh, to bring digital data into the physical world and visualize that data um, uh, in the world around you or things like dialogue flow for conversational experiences. Um, so I can you know, query an enterprise application as, as, I, as easily as I would my digital assistant. Um, and then, you know, finally, we've talked about the idea of flexible hardware that can be expa expanded out to knowledge workers, frontline workers, even customer facing devices within a physical premise. Android can meet all of these needs um, and more. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank you so much for the time and attention. I hope you found this uh, lightning round of, of sort of what we see going on in the market valuable. Uh, we definitely encourage you to learn more at android.com slash enterprise and wish you good selling um, in 2021 and beyond. Thank you so much. Looking forward to talking with you soon.